It's already been 45 years. When I was in sixth grade is when our church was founded. And through the exodus and the conquest of Canaan, may that history not only just be history, but be the account of our salvation today. And we can see our spiritual journey through Caleb's journey. So through the passage in Deuteronomy 8, verse 2, or with that scripture reading, I'd like to share a message entitled, Caleb's Journey. And Caleb's journey can be largely divided into five sections. So today, let us trace Caleb's journey. Our first main point is that Caleb's journey began with the Exodus. This journey began by departing from Egypt. And Caleb marched out of Egypt with the Israelites in the Exodus. However, he was not an Israelite. He was not a descendant of Jacob, but he was a descendant of Esau. But he came to believe in the God of Israel, and he was admitted into the tribe of Judah. According to Revelation 11 verse 8, the e or Egypt is a symbol of the world. the Israelites were able to come out of the land of bondage through the blood of the Passover lamb. And the blood of the Passover lamb foreshadows Jesus Christ who would die to atone for our sins. When we believe in Jesus Christ and accept him as our Lord and Savior, we too are taking part in the Exodus. So Caleb's journey began with the Exodus. And our second main point is that God entered into a covenant with his people at Mount Sinai. Simply put, they received the word of God at Mount Sinai. After Ratifying the covenant, the Israelites became the people of God. He gave them his law, the word, and his law instructed his people how they were to live holy lives in Canaan. And through the covenant, Caleb became a person of God or a part of the people of God along with the Israelites. And God gave the Ten Commandments inscribed on the two stone tablets. And just as Moses came down with God's word from the mountain, we too have received the word of redemption. And through, with this word, we must conquer Canaan. And haven't we accepted the word that came down from the mountain through Huizan, Reverend Abraham Park? And with this word of redemptive history with which we've been given, we must conquer the land of Canaan. But before we can conquer the land of, land of Canaan, we must be trained in the wilderness. So our third main point is that God trained his people during the 40 years in the wilderness. And the Bible describes the 40, year, 40 years in the wilderness as church life. According to Acts 7 verse 38, This is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness together with the angel who was speaking to him on Mount Sinai. 
and who was with our fathers. And it clearly speaks of the congregation in the wilderness or the church in the wilderness. And we are living out this wilderness life. And the 40 years in the wilderness were the period of training for God's people. Rithma was the 14th camp in their wilderness journey. And the Israelites came to Rithma in 1445 BC. And they received a promise there that they would conquer Canaan. And at that time, Caleb was 40 years old, according to Joshua 14, verse 7. And after another 39 years in the wilderness, the Israelites entered Canaan in 1406 BC when Caleb was 79 years old. And for 39 years, Caleb experienced God's love and testing in the wilderness. And at the end of those 39 years, most of the first generation Israelites that came out of Egypt died in the wilderness. They doubted God's promise and trusted in their human thinking. But there were a few who clung to God's promise and their faith and hope grew more sure through the wilderness experience. Through the wilderness journey, I believe our hope in the world of transfiguration will become even more sure. And we too have to go through our training in the wilderness so that we can conquer our spiritual Canaan. And what are the purposes for our wilderness journey? What does God desire from us in our church life? There are three things or three purposes for our wilderness journey. First, so that we remember. So that we remember. God desired that his people remember the grace that he gave and the his grace, how he had rescued them from Egypt and how he had provided for them in the wilderness. There are many things to remember from the wilderness, yes? Manna came down for 40 years. Without fail, every single day, they were provided manna for 40 years. Water. There were over 600,000 people or men and men alone and including the women and children is about two million people and to have provide water for that number of people to drink every day they would need a small lake for all those people to drink and wash how much does one person today use we use water to shower we drink water we cook stew with water And for 40 years, their clothes and shoes did not wear out. And no matter how hard I try, I can't find a pair of sneakers that don't wear out. And the pillar of cloud and fire of protection to protect from the heat and cold God provided for 40 years. And God was always with them in the wilderness journey. And the Ark of the Covenant is a symbol of God's presence. And he's saying, remember all these things. You didn't go through the wilderness journey because you were great and able. It was all God. So that they can remember, God gave them various feasts and commanded them to build memorials.
God declared in Deuteronomy 32 verse 7, Remember the days of old. And when he says to remember the days of old, he's saying to give thanks to God. We as well must remember God's grace in this wilderness journey because we have to be trained, fully trained in order to conquest or conquer Canaan. And to remember his grace, we've been trained so much, especially by our founding pastor, Reverend Abraham Park, and through our time here in LA. Think of all the retreat centers he built. Pyongang days, he's saying, remember God. So the purpose of the wilderness journey is to remember, and only when we remember can we conquer Canaan. The second, the second is purpose of the wilderness journey was to humble, to humble. In Deuteronomy 8.16, it reads, In the wilderness he fed you manna which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you to do good for you in the end. God intended to lead his people into Canaan after humbling them. He, it wouldn't just end with training, but he desired to lead his people after training into Canaan. And God wanted th to hear the Israelites confess and acknowledge that their entering Canaan was utterly God's work, God's grace. And this is why God performed supernatural things that the Israelites could not take credit for. How can a person part the Red Sea? It's impossible. But God did it. He's saying, look, I did it, not you. He also parted the Jordan River so that his people could cross into Canaan. It was the work of God, providing them manna and water for two million to eat and drink for 40 years is only something that God can do. The pillar of fire and cloud. Furthermore, he enabled his people to war against nations that were bigger and stronger than them and overcome them. And God did all these things to humble the Israelites. And God hopes that the Israelites would acknowledge all that God had done and give him thanks. And pastors, we, and pastors especially, are trained. We were rebuked, scolded by our founding pastor to humble us. We would be scolded in front of other people, but he would come along our side and comfort us. And there were times when I would think, oh, I'm really nothing. And at those times he would lift me up. And we have been trained like this at our LA church. He's led us to have this church life in order to humble us. And the third purpose for the wilderness journey is to test us. He had the Israelites walk in the wilderness journey for 40 years to test them. God wants to confirm whether his people believe or not, or whether they just give lip service of their faith. And to confirm this, God tested his people. For example, God puts his people or tests his people by putting them in difficult circumstances. Though they have faith, he puts them in these difficult circumstances.
After supplying them with water, God suddenly didn't provide water for several days so that they were burning with thirst and he was seeing if they would still trust him. And God would always put his people, the Israelites, against stronger nations. And he's basically having them trust in, trust in him and fight. And he put the Israelites in a situation where the Red Sea was before them and the Egyptians behind them. There was nowhere to turn. And he basically cornered his people to see and verify if his people would trust him or not. And this wilderness journey is not a fun, joyful place. It's a time of training and testing because they have to undergo this phase in order to move on. And similarly, God tests his people today by putting them in difficult circumstances. It can be a sudden financial crisis in one's family. It can be an illness. It can be family problems. Through these things, God wants to know if we still trust Him. The sure sign that we still trust God is to give thanks because giving thanks is our acknowledgement that God is in full control of the circumstances. If we think he's not in control, why would we be thankful? We would be nervous and anxious. But when we believe that all takes place under God's control is when we can give thanks. And through the wilderness journey, through many hardships, our Lord is training us. And there's a purpose to that training. We don't train just to train. So if we look at the next period in Caleb's journey, is that our fourth main point, God enabled the Israelites to conquer the main strongholds in Canaan. The Israelites entered Canaan in 1406 BC. After entering, for six years, so from 1406 BC to 1400 BC, God enabled the Israelites to conquer the main strongholds in Canaan. Caleb saw that for himself. Oh, God led us to victory, even though we are nothing in their sight. And that wasn't just one time, but it was all entirely God's work in which they were able to conquer the main strongholds in Canaan. But that wasn't it. I believe that the spiritual main strongholds were conquered when the books of the Redemption series were published These books have been acknowledged as the truth and power of the words of redemptive history by many theologians and pastors. And I believe that laid the foundation. And, and you've witnessed this as well, starting with book one, the Genesis genealogies. It's biblical, it's true. And just as the Israelites were able to conquer the main strongholds in Canaan, I believe that we too have conquered the footholds and strong, spiritual strongholds. But there still remains the final stage, the final period, which is fifth, our fifth main point. Each Israelite tribe was to conquer their assigned portion in Canaan. 
we must not be spectators, mere observers, but we must be partakers. And this took place over a 10-year period from 1406 BC to 1390 BC. And Canaan was divided among the tribes. And at the start of this 10-year period, Caleb was 85 years old. And though he was older at 85, he was still filled with faith and strength. So Caleb went to Joshua and asked for the piece of land that God had promised him. When God instructed them to conquer Canaan, there was a land that was promised, that God had promised to give Caleb. And Caleb is asking for that land. He's saying, I will conquer that land. And it was 45 years ago that Caleb had re first received this promise from God at Rithma. And 45 years later, that opportunity came to Caleb. For these 45 years, Caleb never forgot God's promise and his hope grew even stronger. And though much time had passed and he was older, I'd, I'd like to now give the conclusion. Today, we are so close to the fulfillment of God's redemptive history. There's not much time left And just as the land of Canaan was divided among the tribes of Israel for them to conquer by, be, by becoming the covenant people, by receiving the word of redemptive history, we now have been commissioned to conquer the land with the words of redemptive history. Do you believe? I asked because it didn't seem like you believed. That's the role of the church. One church has been given the task of conquering New York, the other, Orlando. And this church has been given the land of the LA region to conquer. And personally, I think LA is a very difficult region to conquer. The reason why, I'm, I mean, there is positive things. We can say that it's the first branch church throughout the world. It was the first branch church. It was established even before the Busan church in Korea. It was allotted land first or given the first portion. But there are many giants here, aren't there? Many giants that oppose the words of redemptive history. Just as there were the Anakim in Caleb's days, I think there are many giants here that hinder and oppose. And today marks the 45th year of your spiritual journey. There is much significance here. Forty-five years after Caleb first received the promise, at the age of 85, he asked with faith. For the land that God had promised him, he said, though I'm old, he did not worry because he was fighting with faith. I'd like to conclude today's message by reading Caleb's words, which is in Joshua 14, verses 10 through 12. Joshua 14, verses 10 through 12. Now behold, 
The Lord has let me live just as He spoke these forty five years. From the time that the Lord spoke this word to Moses, when Israel walked in the wilderness, and now behold, I am eighty five years old today. I am still as strong today as I was in the day Moses sent me. As my strength was then, so my strength is now for war and for going out and coming in. Now then, give me this hill country about which the Lord spoke on that day, for you heard on that day that Anakim were there. With great fortified cities. I believe this confession will be your confession. And the purpose for our training is so that we can conquer this land, this region. So let us cling to the word of redemptive history, fight against, and overcome all the Anakim. Let us pray. Father God, thank you. For 45 days, you've put us through hard training so that we are where we are today. And now is the time for us to conquer Canaan. Like Caleb, may we arise in faith and though we have become older and weaker, we can overcome by our faith. And would you grant us the victory? We pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen.